My name is Stephen Martin. I'm the former director of design and planning for Four Freedoms Park Conservancy, and I'm an architect who is working on the smallpox hospital. In the 1850s, Roosevelt Island was known as Blackwell Island, and it housed all of New York's outcasts. The state brought its prisoners, its mentally ill, and its sick, and forced them to live here. The island was full of prisons, hospitals, there's a mental, there was a mental asylum, um, and then of course the smallpox hospital. The smallpox hospital was designed in 1854 by the architect James Renwick Jr. Um, he was a prominent New York City architect who also built St. Patrick's Cathedral and Grace Church. The hospital itself was built entirely by prison labor. Essentially a chain gang worked at a quarry that was just north of us Quarried, some, quarried the granite and then dressed the stone and built this structure. The state of New York would actually house about 100 uh, patients at a time in the building. And it served for a smallpox hospital for about 20 years. In the 1850s, smallpox was an epidemic um, of quite extreme proportions in New York. Actually, in the 20th century, it's estimated that 300 million people died from the disease. And so the state of New York decided to build the smallpox hospital. It would be the first hospital dedicated to smallpox in the United States. Smallpox was such a horrible epidemic that if it was discovered that you had it, you were actually taken by police force and brought here. Ferry boats brought you across the East River um, and you were then um, forced to, to reside here for um, as many months as it was to recover. Recovery from smallpox is very, very challenging. Back in the 1850s, the chances of survival were on, on the better side about 70%. But it's a horrible disease and it actually starts in, essentially on your face, almost like chicken pox. Um, but it, it is a horrible, kind of turns into pustules that cover your entire body in the course of just a few days. I think in 1956, the building was abandoned. And it's been abandoned for the past 70 years. Um, it was entirely stripped during these past 70 years of all of the interior floor slabs, its roof, um, and many, many of its interior architectural details. I'm now working with the state of New York um, and some wonderful historic preservationists, including the offices of Walter B. Melvin Architects, to figure out what could happen to this, to this building in the future. We would really like to see public access once again restored, hopefully in the form of public gardens. The building can be permanently stabilized, but a lot of work still needs to be done.